right, folks, welcome back to Good Enough Customs. So, a uh, little, little different recording time today. Um, it's nighttime. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been another hot one. And uh, I came out to the shop and noped out pretty doggone fast. I was just like, it's just like a freaking oven, man. Uh, so I was like, you know what? Screw it. We're going to wait. We're going to work tonight. And literally, as I was walking out the door, a thunderstorm rolls up, and now it's pouring down rain. The thunder and lightning's kind of settled down a little bit, but uh, uh, I think there's another cell coming on up the way here. So, but I, I'm Jackson's eating him some dinner right now as soon as he gets done. And I guess as soon as the rain lets up, because I'm sure he doesn't want to get soaking wet just walking out here to the shop. But as soon as uh, he gets out here, we're actually going to tag team back here cutting out and getting this uh seam seal dug out so uh i did go and pick up uh an extra bottle of pro propane and uh i've got that on standby and ready to go actually i've got it to where now i can run two torches and of course i've got two little scrapers so uh so we're gonna try to knock that out tonight and uh you know hopefully it won't take too long maybe an hour hour and a half something like that you know, I'm hoping with two of us doing it, one on each side, we can bang it out pretty quick. So then it'll be um, trying to figure out exactly what all I need to do here to get this piece off. And then also figure out how it's attached on the sides. You know, we may go ahead and take these uh, wheel wells out tonight. So what my thought is, is go ahead and pull the wheel wells out. Um, then we can go ahead and get figuring out how the bed floor comes out. Cause it'd be really nice to pull that bed floor out in one piece. Um, that may be a pipe dream. We'll see. But I was thinking if I can pull that bed piece out, you know, the bed floor out, the bed pan, if I can pull it out in one piece, um, then I can take it and the patch panels, lay them out on the floor and make sure that I've got all the cross mirrors where they belong, uh, the dimensions on both match, you know, all that fun stuff. So it's kind of where my head is. I'm not 100% sure if that's the way it's going to work. Um, but, you know, hey, We'll figure this out as we go. So I guess uh, while I'm waiting on Jackson to get out here, I'm gonna finish cleaning some of the crap out of the bed of the truck because you know, you've always got crap you gotta store somewhere. So basically right now we're just transferring it from uh, there to here. <laughs> so Steve Steve is pulling some uh, storage duties tonight. So, uh, um, so anyhow, so that's where we are, and uh, I guess I'm gonna get to it, and hopefully Jackson will be out here shortly to where we can both get to it and try and get some stuff done today. So uh, I reckon we'll catch up with you here in just a few. So, uh, driver's side is pretty well sorted out. You know, I got her 
I got her taken care of around the wheel wheel down low. So I'm gonna unbolt the wheel wheel and it has these bolts going across up here. And uh, other than that, I'm not 100% sure how this wheel wheel comes out, but we're gonna figure that out. So uh, I'm gonna get those bolts out. I think they're half inch. They look like half inch. So they look like half inch bolts. Um, I'm gonna pull those guys out. See what it takes to get this, uh, this wheel well out. All right, folks. So we're going back under just so I can kind of get a little bit better idea of how this thing attaches. So, so this is on the driver's side. I've got the uh, seam sealer pretty well, pretty much out of the way now. Um, so looking down here, and maybe the camera will help me a little bit because it's hard to get my big fat head up there. But this is what we're looking at. I've got right in here. I'm hoping that there's not anything there for me to have to drill out or anything like that. Oh. But like I said, I can't get my big fat head up in there. <laughs> um, I do have this one little whoopsie right here. That that's uh, that was my fault. Um, that's where I was jacking the body up to get uh, to do the body mounts. So that one, it, it bent. So I'm just gonna take a pair of pliers on that and just beep, bend it back out. But uh, yeah, it's hard It's hard to figure out exactly what's going on down here. The, uh, it looks like maybe there's some spot <coughs> dirt right in the mouth. I don't think I could do that again if I tried. But there might be some spot welds up there. I really hope not because that is a really terrible spot to try to do anything. And let's see. I've got the bolts out here. So you can see that's loose. I got that other bolt out. All the bolts are out up here in the wheel well. I can see some seam sealer kind of peeking out right over here um, just below this first bolt hole. Uh, let's see, you can see it right there. Um, so there's some seam sealer, it looks like seam sealer poking out right there. Which that ought to make this all sorts of fun. But, uh, yeah, I'm at a loss here. I'm not really 100% sure how this piece comes out. And I really, and I really don't want to tear it up because, um, there's nothing wrong with these wheel wheels. I don't want to tear them up and have to buy another set of them because there ain't nothing wrong with these. So uh, I guess I'm going to monkey with this a little bit longer tonight. Not a whole lot longer because uh, it's about 10 o'clock. I'm getting tired and uh, I'd, uh, I'd prefer not to be out here all night. So uh, I'm going to mess, mess with this just a little bit more tonight and uh, probably call it. And then I'll be back out here fresh fresh as a daisy and ready to get it in the morning so uh if i see something interesting or something cool tonight i'll jump back on here otherwise i'll see y'all guys bright and early well good morning <laughs> next day function high class luncheon no we won't go down that road but anyways. <laughs> be over here busting out the cabbage patch and the running man here shortly anyhow <laughs> i spent uh I spent a little bit of time last night sitting here uh, looking around on the blazer, trying to figure out, you know, how in the hell is this floor coming out? Because <laughs> it doesn't look like anything comes out. It is infuriating. Um, it, it literally looks like it's just set right there, and that's that's just it. Um, the wheel wells, I've got this, you know, driver's side unbolted. It ain't budging. It looks like it's got some sort of, you know, bonding agent connected up if not seam seal some sort of bonding agent that, that connects up right there on the seam to the outer quarter panel bedside whatever you want to call it 
I don't know what's attaching it to the inside. I, honestly, I've got nothing at this point. So a uh, whole lot of uh, not really having a clue right now. So what I'm going to do, executive decision time. <laughs> yeah, good times. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the old will of death out and start hacking, figure it out later, I guess. I hate doing it that way, but uh, somehow that just seems to work. So let's see what we got without me having to climb up into the actual bed of this truck. <clears throat> So what we have is, uh, let me find them. I found there's one. So we have a spot weld there. Um, it looks like there's, that's maybe just rust. I don't know. But I did locate last night. Oh, here we go. We got spot weld, spot weld, spot weld, spot weld. So my guess is all these little spots right here, all the way, well, let's see, those two are going to be holding in that guy. This guy right here, I'm going to guess, is for this cross member. I believe there's a cross member right here. I believe there's another one somewhere in this neighborhood, and then there's another one somewhere back in this neighborhood over here. Um, I can't remember exactly where, but there are, you know, three, three cross members. Yes, yeah, so we got the tail panel, we got the header panel. And then there's three cross members, if I remember correctly. I ought to know this. Hell, I spent enough time underneath this thing over the last few days just looking. I should know this. But it looks like we have, uh, like I said, a cross member here because I've got these two spot welds. Um, I can't remember. I don't know if that's a spot weld or not. It kind of feels like it might be. Um, so there's another one somewhere in this vicinity. And then there's another one somewhere in this vicinity. So, since I can't figure out how in the hell all this stuff comes out, I'm just going to start disassembling. Like I said, Will of Death's going to come out, and we're just going to start hacking. Just get it gone. So I don't want to cut my cross members to go across the body, you know, across this bed floor, you know, laterally. I don't know which direction to go. I guess uh, east-west direction, if you count going front of the truck is north, back of the truck is south. East-west is how the uh, uh, these three cross members are. I don't want to hack those guys up. And uh, uh, I'm not really feeling like sitting here and drilling out a thousand freaking uh, spot welds. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to get the death wheel out and we're going to go and we're going to cut down the very top edge of this uh, of this rib and we're going to follow that turkey all the way down into here <sighs> once we get down into here then I'll take I'm gonna, from what I understand these guys just kind of pry up um, and it's already lifting a little bit right in this area so I'm going to do that on both sides cut up the top the very top edge of this very last rib we may end up taking and going ahead and cutting because I mean you know there ain't a, there ain't a whole lot to cut over here but go ahead and just start knocking this out back over to here and take it back to the tail panel that way I can at least get this floor out so then I can see okay how is the floor actually held in oh, it's infuriating <laughs> so how's the floor actually held in there how in the hell am I going to get these, uh, not necessarily, I don't know if the fender wheels necessarily have to come out or the wheel wheels. I don't know if they necessarily have to come out, but I, in my head, at least the bottom part's got to come out because you got to get the, uh, got to get the bed floor off. So that's what the plan is for today is, uh, we're just going to hack and slash, you know, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be ugly, but we'll get her done. So, uh, I guess, uh, since we know the plan, I guess nothing to it but to do it, so let's get started. So I figured, hey, if I'm going to cut this thing out, I might as well get this uh, fuel hose cover thingy out of here. And I didn't start the camera up because I was like, I had to take a couple minutes, like four bolts, four screws, um, and a little bit of, you know, sealant stuff. <sighs> I should have recorded it. This thing's been a struggle. So uh, you want to know why they always rust out right here at this little fuel neck opening? It's because that's what you get. You get all this dirt 
mud, sand, all sorts of crap that just does nothing but hold water. And it's just all over this. And then, of course, you know, we got some old wasp nests. And uh, so, fun, fun fact for this. There are five screws, I think, that you can see. Um, two on each side, and then one up in the middle, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Two on each side, <clears throat> one in the middle, on the very top. Um, but what you might not know is that at the bottom, <laughs> the very bottom corner, so down in this little section, let me bend this guy back over. So down in this little section, way down here at the bottom corner, there is another screw. It's covered up by seam sealer. You can't freaking see it. <laughs> you can't get to it with a damn screwdriver hardly. Uh, I was lucky enough to get the seam sealer to break loose on this side, but uh, this little gap here in the, in the, you know, between this and the wheel well, I cannot get down in that little corner with anything to try to get this seam sealer gotten out of there and my screw is like it's like right there so i guess this one we're, we're probably just gonna you know i mean that whole thing's just rotten to pieces anyway so it'll probably just be a pull and twist pull and twist pull and twist pull and twist and just you know basically stress it till the metal cracks and breaks off or i get the uh the cutoff wheel in there and just start you know hacking slicing and dicing so uh yeah good times so anyways as soon as i finish this crap up then i'll get to cutting on the floor all right finally got that thing off of there um the screws surprisingly were not rusted in they were uh they actually turned pretty easy i was finally able to get down in that one corner by using the tip of a screwdriver and just heating the hell up out of it um and then getting the uh seam seal moved out of the way so i could actually get to the head of that uh, head of that screw over there so that part's done so now Got to go through here. I'm going to pick up some of the big crap that's in the ba uh, back here in the bed. And then I just want to run the vacuum. Um, you know, cleanliness next to godliness. Let me help you wash up. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Sorry. And then, um, once I get that done, then I'll put on my PPE. You know, my eyes and my ears. And uh, then uh, we'll commence the jiggling. Come on, y'all. Commence the and get cutting on this guy so we'll catch back up here in just a moment Then. that's one side of it cut so <clears throat> hang on now i can hear myself so what i did was came all the way back to the header i actually got into the uh, i say the header that's the tail panel i actually got into the tail panel i didn't go far enough out so i now know where that's at so i can cut from that line across now um went ahead and cut this little section out and you can see i ran this top part of this rib all the way up to the front careful not to get too deep because you got a cross member here and there's one somewhere in here and then there's one right in here so and then also up there i tried to stay shallow so i didn't get into the header on that end um so and there's definitely uh you can definitely tell that the floor's cut because it's starting to bow slightly I'm sure it doesn't have anything to do with my big butt being on here so anyhow, uh, that side's cut. I guess I'm moving over here to the passenger side and uh, gonna make that cut next. And uh, hopefully this thing don't just fall flat through with me on it because that would really suck. Um, the other alternative is move Steve out because Steve's still hanging out in the shop. 
move Steve out, which means losing my cool air because it's, you know, cooled off from being overnight. Um, and then, you know, climbing up on my little step stool and cutting this thing outside, which may be the, the better option here. I'm not honestly sure. I may climb back underneath it and just double check. One thing that it is for sure is those cross members are spot welded over here on the other side of this thing. So that means those little spots <clears throat> are supporting my weight and the weight of this bed floor. Yeah, so I guess that's what I'm doing next is uh, cutting the passenger side. Hopefully not falling through. So be back in a moment. So I'm cutting around the body mounts because the new ones don't have the body mount brackets. So I'm guessing those are going to, have to be pulled off. So I'm cutting around those and I started making my cut along the back. And as I'm putting weight back here, I'm watching it bow more and more. So for this last little section, I'm going to stand out there and cut it. <laughs> and then the front should just pull up. And then this piece should just come right out once I get it finished cutting. Well, I take that back. I got to drill out those uh, spot welds over here and over here so back at it alrighty so I got her all cut out we go up and around the body mounts on both sides here um, this guy's definitely ready to come out you can see it's trying but we have the cross members, you know, there's six spot welds here and six spot welds up over there. So I got to get those drilled out or I might put a, a grinding wheel on my uh, angle grinder and just grind those out. That may be the better way to go with it. So uh, I'm going to look at doing that here in just a second. And then, then we can work on trying to get this floor, the main part of the floor out. And then maybe... Just maybe um, we can get some sort of clue as to how this comes out around the wheel wells and up against the inside of the bed and all that. You know, I've already got a little bit more room to look over here. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how this all pans out. Get it? Pan? Eh? <sighs> Anyways. <laughs> so... So I'm gonna get back to it and uh, see if we can't get uh, see if we can't get those spot welds taken care of real fast. So maybe I miscounted or I forgot, I don't know. But looking through the uh, through the little cut, through the gap there, I can see cross member here, cross member there. That's it, uh, as far as it's tied in over here next to the uh, uh, wheel wells. So got those guys drilled out. And uh, you know, if you need some, some little cutters, you know, some spot weld cutters and stuff, of course, I ordered these after, uh, after we finished the front floor. It's, you know, smart. <laughs> so, um, so I ordered those. They were like $27 or something like that on Amazon. It was, you know, they're, they're not really expensive. Um, 
but they do a damn good job so what you do is you find your spot weld put a center punch in it drill you a small pilot hole uh, i'm using a 1 uh drill bit then you can take your cutter put it on there and then it's got a little center pin um it's got a little center pin it may still be hot but a little center pin that's uh well it's springy so that way you can run it down in that little pilot hole you drill and that'll keep your cutting edge centered on the spot weld so uh so that's kind of the process for that i wish i'd have done that or thought about that whenever i was doing the front floors made life a lot easier but anyways so i've got these two bolts that are in there they're not really doing anything they're just there so i'm gonna pull those bolts out um i guess i'm gonna have to get up underneath um where these cross members are and get in there with a pry bar or something like that and go ahead and finish busting the uh, spot welds and then maybe this guy i'm not sure how i'm going to get it out uh hopefully it it can lay down a little bit so i can slide it and then pick it up and then move it over and you know just it's a little puzzle so uh <sighs> that's what we can't do Alrighty, lots of uh, crawling around up and under and over and uh, all over the place on this truck. So, a little pro tip for you. Go ahead and pull your center body mounts out. So where those, where those two holes were, or where those two bolts were over here, go ahead and pull the, the body mount out from underneath it um, before you even get started. <laughs> I didn't do that, so it uh, caused a little bit of extra work for myself. Had to uh, jack the body up and then uh, uh, reach in there and, you know, pull the mounts out and let the body back down. But as you can see, we now have a little bit of gap all the way around where the piece that I cut out is sitting a little bit lower. So that's good. That's what we want to see. So uh, with that sitting lower, honestly, I'm not really sure where to go now. So there's a whole lot of guesswork involved with this on my end, since I ain't never done any of this. So, uh, <sighs> so I guess I'm gonna fiddle fart with this for a little bit longer and see if I can't figure out how to get this main part of the floor out because uh, it's gonna be a bear. So I'll catch back up here in a moment. Well, that's out now, so uh, that's a good thing. So what we're gonna do is uh, definitely shop back in here, vacuum up all this crap off the fuel tank. Um, we'll probably get in there inside the frame rails and clean all that mud and dirt and caked on crap off, clean up the frame rails a little bit. You know, just get in here, do a little housekeeping, make this nice. Um, it's not a show truck, but there's no reason why we can't get in here and just you know straighten up a little bit because we're already here. So that part's out and uh, you can tell why I ended up getting it out was because there was no sliding it around, picking it up, angling, doing whatever. I just had to cut a couple little notches out right there, bend them up. I could pick that up, slide it up and pull it out. So that part's done. Now the fun part. Got to figure out how the rest of this bed floor attaches. But the good thing is, is there's all sorts of room for activities here. So much, your robots in here. So many activities. So I can get in here and actually, you know, look and see how this stuff works, how it all connects, um, how it's all held together, all that fun stuff. So that'll be coming up in a future video. Getting that out probably won't be too long before we do that because I really want to get this done. So one more quick thing before I sign off um, is addressing the tail panels. So you know, here in the southern states. 
We get rust, but we don't get bad, bad, bad rust. Uh, this truck has, I think, been in Tennessee pretty much its whole life. So it's got rust, but it's not terrible. So, you know, the northern states, you know, the salt states, the rust belt, whatever you want to call it, they're going to have more problems back here in these tail panels with these guys rotting out, being super brittle, super scaly, virtually non-existent, all that stuff. So one thing you're going to want to do if you're doing the entire floor and you discover this tail panel is just trash is you're going to want to brace up the truck because this right here is the only thing holding the back side of this truck square as I make a circle. <laughs> so this guy's the only thing that holds this whole thing together, keeps it good and square. So if you cut this or you take this out, you're gonna be just, you're, you're gonna have to really work to figure out where everything goes to make sure everything lines up, to make sure your tailgate closes and has proper gappage. Um, so one guy that I saw that actually had some K5 content primarily focused on the tail panel, uh, which I didn't need. I just, I saw it and I was like, oh, let's check this out. But, uh, and I don't remember the YouTube guy to save my life. I can't remember his channel, but uh, um, what he ended up doing was he took uh, some two by fours and built a little bracket or a little brace that comes up off the frame rails. And then he took another two by four and went from bedside to bedside, just up underneath the bedside lips and uh, had it all bolted together, strapped down good and tight. That way it held the bed at the height that it needed to be. It kept the sides square. And then he cut his tail panel out. So that's one big thing is don't, don't cut this guy out unless you've got all this other stuff braced up. Because if you do, you're going to have a bad time. So last week's episode, you heard me talk about how the, why these guys rust out so bad, specifically right here. And also down here where the, uh, the hinge for the tailgate mounts is well if you just look right there you see the problem you've got a tire that's spinning and it's kicking up dirt and dust and crap and grime and everything and then you got these ribs that come up well there's nothing keeping anything from getting inside there so that dirt and crap just gets thrown right up here inside these ribs sits in there and then when you're driving in the rain and guess what that water's going to get in there it's going to sit in with that it's going to make some mud or whatever you know nice little slurry of crap and it's just gonna hold that moisture and then it's gonna do this and it's gonna rot this crap out and then then you got to go and do some repair so whenever i get this thing repaired before or after i put the new pan in i'm probably going to take some seam seal and i'm going to go across every one of these upper ribs as it hits this tail panel because this tail panel is wide it's it's this wide so uh, uh so what i'll end up doing is i'll take and put seam seal across these uh, basically across the entire back and try to block out any moisture that get that can get in there from the freaking tire. That's a that's a design flaw that uh, I'm sure I'm sure nobody at GM really thought about that. So uh, so anyhow, a little tip for you on that. But I guess that'll do it. So uh, I do appreciate y'all guys watching um, this uh, this past week or maybe the week before. Honestly, I can't remember. Uh, channel passed 750 uh, subscribers, which is that is awesome. That's fan freaking tasket. And uh, the channel also hit uh, 50,000 views total, which is pretty awesome. So thank you guys and gals uh, very much for supporting the channel and keeping watching. You know, y'all guys watching, making comments, um, asking questions. I love that stuff. It, it lets me know that, hey, I'm doing something of value because you know, this isn't the easiest thing in the world. You know, I love working on stuff. I love working on trucks, cars, you know, whatever. Um, but then, you know, you got to deal with the camera and figuring out this. And it's like, well, crap, that didn't make sense. I got to reshoot this part. I got to redo this. And then don't even get me started on the editing part. Oh my God, that takes so long. So, <laughs> so, so it really, it does truly mean a lot, um, uh, for y'all guys tuning in week after week and, uh, making the comments and, and just giving me feedback. I love it. So, uh, so anyhow, till next week, y'all guys just remember. It ain't got to be perfect, just good enough. And we'll see y'all later.